Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in dark sided stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? How are you guys doing today? I am Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm excited and delighted to be with you guys today. We're going to be talking about all things spiritual, spirituality, and everything in between. So it's going to be a good one today. Trust me. I can feel it deep down. Today is going to be a good episode. Trust me. Um, I want to say a quick thank you to everybody who is supporting my work, uh, supporting the music, supporting the podcast. You guys are the enablers. You guys enable me to do this. I couldn't do it without you. So thank you guys for supporting my work. Everybody supporting on Patreon. Uh, you guys mean the world to me. I want to give a shout out to a couple of the newest supporters that we have. The people that have come on board. Say quick thank you to... And I'll butcher these names. I don't mean to. It's just it's just a thing. Um, Horg, Horg, Horgwig, Horgwig Sebastian. Thank you. I know I butchered that name. Horgwig Sebastian, thank you so much for your support. Tate Zinzer, love you, brother. Thank you. That was a good podcast we did the other day. Austin Kerr, thank you for coming on and uh, aboard and joining. Crowlings, David Huffman, Angel Rigaldo and Susie Lapner, all within the last two weeks. Thank you guys for jumping on board with me and enabling me to bring this to the people. Couldn't do it without you. If you would like to give, head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography, 10 plus albums. All the new music that I'm working on is uploaded there. As soon as the song is done, it's uploaded months before it's available to the general public. You get all kind of perks for uh, supporting and partnering with me. So head on over there, check that out. You also get access to our Thursday night uh, teaching community aspect of what we do here, which is the School of the Mystics. It's the hands-on community aspect group um, teaching you how to hear the voice of God, how to move in the prophetic. We've had powerful encounters uh, worldwide, people joining from all over the earth, coming together. Uh, It's amazing seeing people for the first time step out in faith and be obedient to uh, the, the call of God and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to them. Most of you guys have been hearing it your whole life. So we have a safe environment created at the School of the Mystics where we just come on here and uh, and we create a safe space to, to practice, you know, and God shows up and moves and it's been really beautiful. So if that interests you, you get access to that for a dollar a month, man. If you, in, any level of support, you get access to that every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central. Patreon.com backslash Truth Seeker. That's out the way. Thank you, guys. I love you. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring on today's guest. Today, I am speaking with J.D. Ramsey with The Last Great Awakening. J.D. Ramsey, what's up, my brother? Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Truth Seeker. How's it going, man? Going good, man. First, um, heard about what you were doing probably 2014. Maybe it was 2014 when you came to a little small town called Chickasaw, Alabama, doing a tent revival and i just kept hearing about it going into i heard you came to town 
and you wanted to know where the, the worst neighborhoods were, where the people who were hooked on drugs and substance, where the people were, where the prostitutes were, the people who needed help, where they were. And I heard you went there and set up a tent and started preaching the gospel. You went to uh, Chickasaw, Alabama. You went to Fairview. I have people in both communities and I heard the, the amazing story. So I had to come check you out for myself. Went to that uh, event there, man. Power of God showed up, healing people, uh, Holy Spirit, filling people for the first time, changing their lives, man. Uh, thank you for what you do, man. Uh, yeah, when, was that 2014 that you first came came over this way? We were in uh, Fairview in 2013, summer 13. 2013. Chickasaw was uh, summer of 2014. I was just scheduled to be in Fairview for uh, three weeks to do uh, – uh, a tent revival out there on Highway 98, and it turned around and stretched out into five straight months. Uh, so the Lord's blessing was all over it, and I stayed in the the Mobile Bay area for the next probably two years, I think it was, before we moved on. So w with that being said, give a little bit of um, background uh, of what you do, what you bring to the table. You uh, uh, um, evangelists, tent revivals, you set up, you, you build it, they come, God shows up. Just just talk a little bit about your background, man, and what you bring to the table. Yeah, uh, I got I got saved in uh, prison in Arkansas about 12 and a half years ago. I had an encounter with the Lord that led to my salvation when I was in an isolation cell there. And and after that, that I had a real powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and God began to, you know, the last year and a half that I was in the prison, prepare me for when I'd finally get out one, one day because I knew he was going to call me into the ministry. And about six months after I'd been out of prison, uh, the Lord did call me the ministry. And shortly after that, I was in a bad logging accident that uh, where I was uh, just hit in the face with a tree, put me in the hospital for three weeks, nine days, knocked unconscious. Several visitations by God when I was in that unconscious state where he told me things that were going to happen in my life. A lot of them have. Some of them haven't yet. Uh, but after that, and when I came out, I uh, woke up and looked at my face in the mirror, just had to swell up about the size of a basketball and uh, jaws wired shut. And he, uh, he told me, he said, you're never going back to work a, another day for another man in your life. Again, you're going to preach the gospel all over the world. And so uh, finding out how that's going to happen for somebody that's a two-time convict who has a credit score of about neg negative 787 uh, and everything stacked in the world against him can't be really accepted by any mainline denomination or anything like that because of my past. Uh, it, was, uh, it was difficult navigating those waters because I knew God wanted to do something special with my life. Uh, and I didn't know what that was. But after I had that accident, I just began to become abandoned in prayer and uh, seeking God uh, in just uh, a wild way. I'd always been a little bit of a loose cannon. And uh, <laughs> uh, what happened with the tent ministry, this is all that started. I said all that to say this is because one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm in the tent revival business is because, um, number one thing, usually my message is just not, it's just not acceptable by the mainstream. So I've got to have a place that's just open and free to do what I'm supposed <laughs> to be doing. Uh, I was at a, I was at a revival in Heber Springs, Arkansas. It's been about, yeah, I guess about eight, nine years ago. Uh, and uh, it was in a town where I'm from there in Arkansas, an evangelist that had been in that area for the last 40 years, actually, he would actually lived in that area for 20, uh, was preaching his last revival meeting he'd ever preached at this church. And I went to this church, place was packed out that night. I'm in the back and the, the man of God who's ministering, just stops preaching, comes back and starts talking to me and right midstream of what he's doing. Got a huge crowd of people there and just stops doing what he's doing and comes back and talks to me. And he said, I just, I just don't know what's going on here. I just see something on you and I just want to come talk to you. Well, that night later, he prayed for me. He prophesied over me that the highways were going to be mine, that I was going to heal the sick and cast out devils. And uh, about a month later, he was a tent preacher also. He had his tent up in Romance, Arkansas. It's the last tent revival he'd ever do. He had me come up and testify. And uh, I did. I came up there to testify. But first I prayed for him. The power of God knocked him out. And here's the man of God. He's on the floor. Now I've got the meeting. And he's never <laughs> had anybody preaching his tent ever. You know, nobody's ever even ministered up underneath his tent. Well, when he finally got back up, he just said, son, obey God. And I went to praying for people. There was a lady in there that night. She was on a breathing machine couldn't breathe hardly. I prayed for her when she got done. She was running sprints around that tent. I yeah. mean, God was just all over. Uh, God just went to healing people in there that night. That was the first time I just saw an open demonstration of the healing power of God when I prayed for somebody. And the next year I actually used his tent equipment 
uh, myself, did about seven or eight revivals around Arkansas. The year after that, I purchased my own equipment, and it's just been growing ever since. I believe it was the year after that, I wound up in Mobile, and we had that five-month tent revival. So uh, I just want to encourage anybody that's watching, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to have any idea what you're doing either. You just step out and believe God and obey God, and the Lord will start doing the rest. So uh, we've been doing the tent revivals now for like the last, I guess, seven years, and we've had a, a quite a bit of success with it right now i've got my tent set up over in carbondale illinois um and we've been we've been there since the you know the beginning of august this will be uh like the 26th night of the meeting actually tonight and god's just blessing pouring out his spirit uh people are getting saved uh healings are happening miracles are taking place uh the holy spirit's just falling on people and awakening to them to their destiny and god's being glorified up in the midst of it it's just awesome stuff it's, that's powerful, man, and uh, and seeing you just come firing out the gate, just you know, what I'm saying, just going strong. And uh, let me ask you about this about um, activation and mantles because you said the guy came up to you, prophesied over you, preached over, uh, uh, prayed for you, and uh, stopped this service to come in and and you know, what I'm saying, bring the word to you. Do you do that for people now? Was that kind of like something that was imparted to you? Do you kind of follow that mold? Does God speak to you mid service to call out things and prophesy over people as well? You kind of have that same mantle. Well, I, I'll tell you how the Lord led me into that ministry. It was uh, that night when I met to that meeting, I'd been up on top of this mountain in uh, uh, Locust Grove, Arkansas, fasting and praying for uh, a couple months. So, you know, on the other end, and what I do most of the time, my, my biggest deal, even before I minister, I, I really don't even preach that long to people. Uh, I, I spend most of my time uh, instructing them on how to receive before I share anything. So the number one thing I tell people is this, is your hunger is what's going to pull the mantle off the man of God. And uh, people have a hunger for the power of the Lord and have a hunger for the things of God. And the Lord, knowing the future, knows what kind of commitment that they're going to give from the beginning. And so, so I was, when I showed up that night, you know, my hunger pulled something off that guy and, uh, and, and that always works. The, uh, as far as, uh, as far as the ministry of impartation, uh, the number one message that I've always had to believers is the message of the Holy spirit. And, uh, that's my number one message to believers. The Lord uses me in the healing ministry. And that was kind of an accidental thing that I never really intended on getting off into. And we can talk about that tonight and how that really develop but that just happened out of really the overflow of my seeking god it wasn't something i ever intended for but but my main message to people who are believers is the message of the holy spirit and the reason why i do believe so adamantly in the message of the holy spirit is is because he can empower you to do the impossible uh when it's completely improbable for you to ever succeed like my story i'm a i'm a two-time convict man I, yeah. I shouldn't have any way to have made my way but god's made my way and he's done that by and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the anointing that's uh, existed in my life, it's not only existed for ministry, uh, but it's existed for business. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's existed to succeed and dominate in every aspect of life. And I can say that legitimately today, uh, having the freedom to go do whatever I want to do, uh, not paying attention to the income, the outcome or any of those things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm liberated to be a son of God and handle family business here on the earth. And that's by and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for, for years, I'll tell you about something that happened just here this last year, and this will really encourage people because um, we're living in a real, uh, a real open heaven time in human history. Uh, the death of Billy Graham this last year was a very significant thing. And um, it, it leaves open and on the table uh, access uh, to, to the power of heaven for this generation uh, that a way uh, it was not possible before the passing of Billy Graham. He was almost a marker. And when he was taken out of the way here on February 22nd of this last year, uh, the Lord has just been uh, doing some very significant things. I've had more encounters with God here this last year since the passing of Billy Graham than any time in my life. And the reason why is this is because he's raising up a generation uh, not to inherit just a mantle from the previous generation, but the mantles of multiplicities of generations. And so we have a real uh, opportunity at this moment in history to access the grace and the power of God like we never did before. Uh, for years, I've ministered the Holy Spirit, ministered the Holy Spirit heavily and seen 
just people uh, uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm not kidding. Thousands of people touched by the power of Pentecost. But what I noticed, there was something different going on a lot of times in my meetings where people would receive a real powerful impartation of the spirit, uh, as opposed to some people who were just, you know, touch, but not impacted. Uh, for instance, yeah. I had a friend of mine who came down there to that meeting we did in Mobile. He was a pastor in Missouri and he had left his church for 15 years uh, and, and took off with me, messing around with me. And that was five years ago. And I, I told him the last time I talked to him, I said, you're crazy, you know, running off and leaving everything you did to come mess with me then because I was just wild. I didn't care about <laughs> anything. And I could have got him in a lot of trouble. The guy's married and he's got four kids and he ran off and left everything and went with me down there. Um, he had been dealing with the breathing issue. For like two years, for two years, he'd been dealing with this breathing issue. And it came to a head that spring before we opened up in Fairview, Alabama. We were actually in Petal, Mississippi, and uh, he was underneath such a severe physical attack, he could barely breathe. Uh, I mean, it was just winded. We had to leave the meeting we were in, and we went back to his house in Missouri. He literally thought that somebody else was going to, uh, you know, marry his wife after he died and raise his kids. Well, I'm out there ministering the first week we're at that Fairview meeting that went for five straight months. And I went over there and just laid hands on him. Power of God hit him. And he went out for about three hours. And when he was knocked out, the Lord came to him and he had a visitation, uh, sang a song over him. And uh, he got back up. He was completely delivered to this breathing issue that he's had. Uh, went back home to Missouri after we were done with that five month revival and opened up a church there that just exploded. Uh, so the accelerating oil of God came on his life through that encounter he had that night after the laying on of hands. Uh, and so I just want everybody to understand here, if you've never been filled with the spirit, uh, you, you, you can be filled today, but there's also a continual infilling of the Holy Ghost that the Lord's destined for us to happen that, you know, not only makes us feel good, but aligns us with our destiny and provides the grace that we need to move into that. That's, yeah. that's, that's the thing right there. The, the, the initial encounter with God through the baptism of the Holy Spirit is just the open door. Uh, to the to to the beginning of the flow of the river where we get into our ankles to our knees, then waters to swim in uh, that we're pushed about in for the rest of our lives underneath this control. So so this last year, it was very significant. Uh, last year, I was in uh, Carbondale, Illinois area for the uh, for the eclipse that happened last year that crossed yeah. our country, the total solar eclipse, which I believe that total solar eclipse that happened this last year and that bullseye blood moon that fastened itself on Jerusalem is the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy, actually, that he prophesied uh, that Peter uh, re-echoed that the sun would turn black and the moon would turn into blood before the coming and dreadful day of the Lord. Not too many prophecy teachers are even focused on that, but those two events happening in this last year like they did, we don't have time. We could do a whole show about that, actually, uh, would, would be a fulfillment of that prophecy. And so we're really at the brink of the last great awakening. And and I knew that total solar eclipse that was coming across this nation was God saying that I'm going to highlight America to touch the world one more time. And um, anyway, I was here in Carbondale, Illinois, which is the focal point of that eclipse. It was the greatest place of totality. Uh, when the next eclipse comes across here in six years, uh, it's going to be the intersection point, the cross point of that uh, of that crossing. And I was here and uh, the Holy Spirit just began to reveal to me some things he wanted to do in this region. Uh, also, some things he wanted to do in America and how he wanted to touch the nations from this area right here. And I just began to seek God desperately around the turn of the year because that's the only way that you're going to pull uh, the encounter out of him. I mean, it, it, it all comes back to hunger. And, yeah. and uh, Jesus never meets people who are, uh, who, are, who are full and who are satisfied. He meets people who are desperate. And the, the, the key to encountering God is never being satisfied. Uh, with anything that's being offered to you and always wanting more from him. He, he rewards that because it takes faith. Every time you have to encounter him in a different level, it takes more faith yeah. because it's going to take more faith to meet him the next time than it did before. Uh, so let me, I just let, begin let, let, let me ask you something about that. Um, there's a weird place that we're, we are there. The, the prosperity ministry has kind of taken that and blew it out of proportion, right? And had people pursuing money instead of pursuing God, that, that type of st stuff. Here's the, here's the thing. Let me present to you because as seekers, as believers, it's a weird dichotomy because we're supposed to be content 
with what we have, but at the same time expecting more. Where does the two meet? And, and not being like always wanting more. Cause like, I know like the prosperity ministry is like, okay, you get a good job. You need a better job. You got that job. You need a better and keep moving up the corporate ladder and stuff. It's always a seeking after things and materialism and in the spirit, it's a little bit deeper. So where does the, the hunger and pr- pursuing God for more of God and, and being obedient and faithful with what he's already given us. Cause I'm at a weird place too, because I've had so many encounters. I'm trying to articulate and find the best way to get it out there and share the revelation uh, that that can help the most people. But then again, if I didn't do that, I would feel like a brat to be given all these angelic encounters, Holy spirit fallout encounters and still want more, want more, want more. I do deep down. I really do. And I'm, I'm, with that pursuit, I'm getting more. Let's say that. You know what I'm saying? But where 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 does the two meet to be content? Godliness with contentment is great gain, but still pursuing God for more that he has for you. That's uh that's a great question right there. And this is the point that I've came to at. I'm going to find him and 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 with finding him, I find everything else I need. Yeah. Uh and so so as far as the prosperity message goes about money, I've never seen a man of God walking in the power of the Lord that was broke. Matter of fact, the anointing is a magnet for money. And uh, if you if you keep that in your life, then all of those things will, will fall under you the, as far as the things of the world. And I believe that's what the apostle was talking about when he was saying, be content, be content with the things in the world. But I'm telling you, with God, never be content with where you're at. Yeah. There's always more. And, 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 uh, the Bible says, I believe it's in third John. He says, you know, I said, I want you to be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. So as you're pursuing God, your soul becomes prosperous. And as a byproduct of your soul becoming prosperous, you're automatically going to be healthy and, and, and have money. Those things are going to be natural byproducts of that relationship. Uh, but what I was talking about with the encounters, the, the key to the encounter is this, is that God is wanting to bring back apostolic power to his church. Uh, We're not experiencing that level. And the Bible is uh, an apostolic book. And apostolic just generally means sent. And so we're seeing the the whole entire paradigm here in America about to flip. I could go off into a couple of dreams I had earlier this summer about some things that were going on and what the Lord was doing. Uh, But God is wanting to restore in these last days the apostolic mandate and the apostolic power to his church. And so you can't be sent or be apostolic uh, outside of having encounters with God, it's that's play. That's the place where the the prophetic word of the Lord, the 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 written word of the Lord, that's where it becomes real and it be- becomes legitimate, and that's where you become convinced because it's difficult to convince somebody this stuff's real unless you experience it first. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, taste and see that the Lord is good, and yeah. blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Yeah, and so talking about just where I believe we're at uh, in human history and how God is is just bringing things into alignment to pour his spirit out in this earth in a way we've never seen before, which is exciting, man. It's exciting. The, the opportunity uh, to operate in, in, in the grace of God that we're being offered right now. And even this last year, uh, last, last of 2017, we're of course just entering into a new year in the Jewish calendar in 57, 79. Yeah. But when 2018 began, I just began to desperately cry out to the Lord and, uh, and, and, and fast and pray and seek his face. And, and ask him uh, because uh, the level of power, I mean, I myself am operating in. I didn't feel like it was adequate to, to, to come up to the level that the Lord has, has required us to, to come up to. You know, he's, he's mandated us. He's commissioned us to disciple the nations. Yeah. Man, think about it for a minute. That's a pretty tall order right there, dude. And yeah. uh, so this is, this is, you know, this is, the, this is the bar is that we're called to disciple nations. Uh, so for us to to begin to do that, uh, we've got to start let, walking in a level of the power of the Lord that I don't believe any of us have experienced. So, so like I said, I had I've been fasting and I've been praying and I've been seeking God about 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 what He wanted to do in these last days. And and uh, I said, God, I said, you know, we're not ready. That was myself included in that. All right, I'm not being critical of any person. <laughs> I need more. Yeah. All right. A lot of times preachers will try to preach. You, you, we we got to pray more. We got to believe God more. We got to do this more. It always comes back to doing more and uh, that the people aren't doing more. And that person's 
is the one that's doing it all. Look, I, I, I know I'm not where I need to be and I need more. And the, and the Holy Spirit, he spoke to me back in January of this last, last year. And he told me that, uh, he said, uh, he said this to me when I asked him, I said, how are you, how are you going to spread, you know, this, this revival in these last days amongst your people and bring us up to where we need to be so we can actually fulfill that great commission. And he said, I'm going to impart the fire of God. And, and I was like, all right, well, what's that about? And, uh, uh, about a month later, he actually showed me through an encounter with him. He, 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 he turned me on to something and tricked me actually to go into a meeting in Dallas, Texas that I never would have went to, to hear a preacher. I never would have went to see. So I just want to encourage everybody that's, you know, listening right now. Uh, you may find some things God has in store for you in some places you never expected it. Yeah. And time. most of the time that's the way it happens. And I've learned to be more open, even understanding the Bible, uh, to the flow of God, even to a lot of of other different things, uh, because I've, 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 I've had to be crept up on by Jehovah sneaky and have some of my religious structures shook from time to time. Yeah. So, so I wound up in this meeting in Dallas, Texas, and it's the day after Billy Graham died, February 23rd of this last year. And I was in this meeting sitting about midway, uh, in the auditorium during this man of God ministering when the, when the fire of God just fell on me, it was like a blanket. That's all I could explain to you. It was like a blanket. Uh, that was just on me right there. And I, I, I felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. I mean, I really did. It was just, it was just powerful. I began to weep uh, under the presence of God. And, and this is one way you really know it's legit. If it makes you cry, uh, that's, that's real. When you see a six foot five, 275 man bawling like a little baby, you know, something's going on. And I mean, I was just weeping uncontrollably until about 30 minutes later, I got up to the front of the auditorium where the man of God came and by and prayed for me. The power of the Lord hit me, knocked me about 10 foot back into the front row of chairs. And I just went into a hysterical laughing fit for the next morning uh, until the night, uh, excuse me, until the next morning, basically. Yeah. People were walking by me in the auditorium, falling out. I mean, there was just a real open heaven right there. Something powerful happened that day. And the next morning, uh, the Lord took me to the uh, gospel of Luke to the first chapter and he showed me what happened and he showed me how to begin to release the same kind of experiences on people. But through that encounter, I had faith to begin to release that. Yeah. And so one of the most important things about having encounters with God is this, it makes what happened to you real. So you've got faith to release it onto somebody else. Exactly. That's, uh, and that's a very important key right there. And so, so I, I began to understand a different aspect of releasing the Holy Spirit on people uh, that I didn't understand before. And of course, God will always back up the encounters you have with scripture. Uh, I want people to understand that right now. You'll be able to find it in the word of God. The very next morning after I had this experience where I understood that this was more different and this was powerful, like what I was sharing with you, what happened to my friend down there up underneath the tent where he was completely healed and delivered and aligned with his destiny. That's another thing about the encounters with God that we have. They align us with our destiny and they break us open with the humility. We're going to need to walk into them right there. And, and so, so the Lord took me to the, the gospel according to Luke and he, he began to show me uh, how Christ was born through Mary. It's very interesting when the angel Gabriel shows up and tells Mary, you're going to have a son. He's going to, he's going to be Jesus. And he's going to, you know, he's going to deliver his people from their sin. And she says, yes, which that was a big order right there, believe it or not. I mean, it took a lot of faith for her to say yes. And she said, well, how's this going to happen? It says the power of the highest is going to come on you and overshadow you. That Greek word for the word overshadow there is very interesting. It's the word episkiazo. It's only used five times in the New Testament. It's used in the, the birth of Jesus Christ, speaking of the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary uh, to impregnate her with Christ. It's also spoken of the cloud of glory that's on the mountain of transfiguration uh, that comes when the Lord Jesus is having that encounter where he's metamorphosized, where we're getting a view with what encounters look like. And the I, I, hey, I've been preaching that, man. Hey, that's the first time we we basically got to follow in, follow him to the secret place. And I believe that that happened maybe every time he went into the secret place. It did. But, you know, truth, the people that got a view of that were the ones that were deeply committed, Peter, James, went, and John. They had to go to and journey. So, <laughs> and so they got, they got a real interview of what was going on. And I'm going to break down theologically here in just a moment, the mechanics of the encounter and what happens. 
what's really interesting about that encounter with that cloud comes and the overshadowing that episkiazo comes. Um, same word as when Christ is born, because when we're having these encounters with God, that's what's going on. Christ that's is being good. born in us. Wow. Yeah. So we can be released from us. And be, that way we become a channel that redemption flows through. And that's what these encounters are happening when we're in the presence of God. It's really interesting when Jesus is on the bottom of the Mount of Transfiguration, he's talking about the word of the cross. And of course, we know the word of God is the water. I think I might have lost you there, JD. I lost you. Can you hear you. now? Got you. Good. Okay. When he gets to the top of the mountain, he's having an encounter with God, and Moses is there. And Elijah's there, and of course the clouds there, and and he's transfigured. The Bible says, and actually it says as he prayed in Luke's gospel that he was transfigured. All right, JD, I think I think the uh, internet may be glitching or something. I'm coming through in uh. Real choppy right now. Basically happening there is the Lord Can you hear me, JD? Showing <laughs> us what happens through the process of the world coming together and encounter. When this, are we back yet? Uh, how about leave the uh, meeting and, and come back, just get a reconnection on it. That, that might work better. And I can edit, I can edit the dead air on the podcast. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah, it may work better. I can edit it on the audio and just so it'll be better um, for the listener, for the experience, because it's talking about some good stuff. Right when it's getting really good is when that happens. That tells you something, right? Right when it's getting really good, the audio cuts out. Man, um... All right, let's try it now. We're back. How's that, Truth? Refreshed. We're good. All right. And what I was saying was on top of that mountain, we've got Moses and Elijah with Jesus up there, and they're talking about the cross, the same thing that he was talking about on the bottom. And all of these encounters, they lead us into death to self. That's what happens right there. The encounter gives you the courage to die. That's the real incredible thing about that. It gives you a courage to sacrifice your own life. It gives you a courage to obey God like you wouldn't have unless you had that encounter. And so the word's just a dead seed until you take it into that place of his presence where it comes alive and you get the guts to die. It's very interesting when he gets to the bottom of that mountain after he's been transfigured, he encounters a boy who's been throwing himself in the water in the fire. That's what happens right there. Who His disciples couldn't cast the devil out of, but he has no problem dispossessing that demon that tosses that boy in the water and the fire. Why? Because he's been submitted to the process of water and fire himself. He's talking about the water of the word on top of the mountain. On top of the mountain, he's experiencing the fire of God. Uh, you've got two people with him, Moses and Elijah. Moses is notorious for drowning people. Elijah is notorious for setting people on fire. And so when you come together with these elements encounter, it begins to wield the image of God on the inside of you and you begin to take your place in dominance over mankind through death to self. It's really a powerful experience, but that episcazo, that overshadowing was happening there. And that same word is also used when Peter's shadow is released in the book of Acts and it heals people. So God through these encounters is taking us from within to without. That's basically what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw that in the story of Christ being born with Mary and began to experience a new faith to release a new dimension of the Holy Spirit on people. And we're just seeing we're just seeing God increase uh, in that realm uh, to a place that we've never seen before, because traditionally most people look at it as an experience where I'm going to speak in tongues. But the Lord said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. And so that, that word witness, it means live and sacrifice. It means you're going to get power and yeah. you're going to get power to give Morning. your life up. <laughs> and so the second time the Holy Spirit's talked about being released in the book of Acts, it's through the impartation of the apostles. And they're being followed around by a former witch named Simon the Sorcerer. Now, this guy had been into magic. He'd been in the black arts. He'd been in all kinds of stuff, but he saw a greater power yeah. in what he practiced, and he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Now, when he tried to buy the, the impartation of the Holy Spirit 
from Peter and John, I don't think he was trying to buy Shabba Baba. I really don't. And you don't see witches running into Pentecostal churches saying, give me some money so I can speak in tongues. Yeah. What I believe he was wanting to buy this encounter that we have the ability to drop on people uh, uh, through the apostolic anointing of God. And this is one thing I see returning. The one reason why we're not experiencing this in the United States uh, is because, number one thing, men of God won't hold it as holy uh, because it is a holy thing mm -hmm. and it's not for sale. It's just like Peter told Simon the sorcerer, this thing's not for sale and you don't have any part in this message. And so God is looking for faithful men who will freely receive this and freely give it out and not try to bottle it up and sell it. Yeah. Uh, and that's the reason why we haven't really been experiencing this apostolic impartation that aligns you with your destiny. Uh, I was telling you about that, that, that meeting there where I had that encounter with the Lord uh, the day after Billy Graham died. Well, two weeks later, I chased that same ministry. He's got an international healing ministry. Who he is is unimportant. He's a powerful man of God. Uh, but I chased him to not Todd uh, Bentley by any any means. Is no, it? it's, it's not, it's not okay. Todd Bentley, but uh, actually it was in a Randy Clark meeting. Tell you, okay. that. you, know, you know who Randy Clark yeah. is? Yeah, yeah. It was in it was in a Randy Clark meeting. I chased Randy to um, to uh, all the way to Lexington, Kentucky, two weeks after that. And um, anyway, I was in a, a service there with him on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, and I mean, I fell up underneath the power of the Lord. And my hands literally caught on fire from like my fingertips all the way back to my elbows, just literally caught on fire. And the glory of God pinned me to a chair. Well, when I got up in front of him that night after I could finally walk, he came by me and he, he ministered to me and he said, you're going to you're going to you're going to see a, a massive increase of healing come out of your hands right there. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, well, that's good. Uh, but I really didn't understand what was going on. And and uh uh, I asked the Lord later that night, I was like, well, Lord, we see people get healed a lot. Uh, he said, yeah, I said, but you don't minister healing to people. He said, I want you to start ministering, healing to people more and telling them what I did for you here. And he said, I'll start healing people more. And we've been seeing that. But I got to talk with Randy the next night in a private room by myself. And and he got to pray with me and he prophesied to me. It was a real powerful moment. And I really appreciate that man of God giving me some time like that because he didn't know me. It's very interesting. I'm in Southern Illinois right now. and uh, he actually had, uh, he was actually got started in ministry in this same area that I'm in right now, and they rejected him. But it was very, really cool that the Lord used him to dump two things into me that I need to carry into this region with me. So this is the power of impartation. That's what I want to tell you. And um, I got to speak with him that night, and this is what he told me. One of the things he told me, he told me a lot of different things, but he looked me dead in the eyes and he told me, he said, "Son," he said, "I see the anointing of God all over your life," and he said, he said, "Always continue." to pursue that anointing. He said, you'll never need money. Uh, you'll never need anything else. Uh, the, the, the power of the Lord that God wants to manifest and demonstrate in your life will always be enough. So that, that really answers your question. The one thing I appreciate about Randy Clark's ministry and why I, I believe God's used him like he has is he doesn't have anything for sale. He doesn't manipulate people for money and he's not into manipulating people to promote who he is or himself. He just organically allows God yeah. to do what he does and submits his life to the process of, 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 of being sold out to God. I mean, that guy's in his sixties and still traveled 250 days out of the year. Uh, so, you know, there is a cost to it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to come along with it, but I, I tell you what, uh, it's the best trade that you can ever make. And, uh, so I just want to, everybody that's watching right now, uh, I want to stir your faith up, uh, that this is a time where God is really shifting, uh, his people. Uh, into a place of the apostolic, uh, and that apostolic grace comes straight from the throne room of heaven. And so every time you're encountering God, it's like when Isaiah encountered God, he encountered him in that throne room. And when you encounter him in that throne room, you can become a vessel that the pattern of heaven can begin to flow through. And that's the whole reason God wants to, wants to use us in that capacity is to get heaven into the earth. That's good. That's real good. That's, um, I've had very similar encounters in, uh, early on being called out of meetings, you know, and being the one singled out and son, come up here to the front. The glory is on you, you know, going to different tent meetings and revivals and being called out. It's like, man, God's doing something in me, you know, early on, man. Um, and that, that's, that's real good about Simon the sorcerer. Cause he wanted to buy what they had. And it's like, man, this comes through, through time, really time with, 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 with Jesus and, and, uh, in, in the secret place and, um, intimacy. And we talk about that fire, 
like the fire to carry it. It's fun. It's good. It feels amazing, but it comes with a cost as well. You know what I'm saying? Because the fire is going to burn out all of the impurities that you have within you. So it's a refiner's fire. It's a cleansing fire as well. Uh, it's a revival fire to to, carry, to literally carry the spirit of revival with you. Same thing with the anointing. The anointing just isn't something that comes upon you. In, in, in order to carry that oil, the uh, olive has to be crushed to get that oil. And, uh, and it costs. So just for people to think like, oh, I want to do what he's doing. And I talk about this all the time. You haven't seen, and I'm not bragging, but this, this, this is a universal thing. You haven't seen the hours of prayer. You haven't seen the, the emails, the negative backlash and pastors calling you out and you'll never be nothing and you're still a this and God's not with you. All of the things that the persecution and stuff that's come against you, but yet you stay on the path. That's, that's how you carry the anointing. When the persecution comes against you, you are literally crushed. And But if you remain true, you stay faithful and respond like Jesus and go into the secret uh, chambers of God, you'll begin to be crushed and, and you'll get that, that oil as well. And that, that's what breaks the yoke or destroys the yokes is, is, is the anointing. And so it cost. And that was the whole picture there of uh, wanting it to be like an overnight thing. It's like, man, it, it really comes out of the, the uh, secret chambers with God. And um, you have to carry it. You have to walk a fine line, you know, and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's scary. You know what I'm saying? You have to be, you have, you, it should be, you should be, you should honor it. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me ask you about this too, because like you, you're mentioning the death of Billy Graham um, and how it was kind of like a marker. Um, I've definitely seen um, Benny Hinn talk about the death of, of, um, Billy Graham as well, and how it was like, you know, the, the end of an era, but the beginning of the release of something new as well. Um, I, I really like Benny Hinn. I uh, read a lot of his books coming out. I really like how he ministers on the Holy Spirit and encounters. That he Was he an impact for you? Did you check out any of his books or his ministry or his teachings over the years? Because he can get pretty deep, too. Yeah, I've read, uh, I read his book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Exactly. And, um, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it and I like his ministry. Uh, I think he's a man of God and, uh, you know, the Lord has really used him to turn people on to the, the, the Holy spirit. Uh, but myself, it was just, um, actually as far as how I was lured in, uh, it's always been, uh, it's always been, uh, how would you say it? An organic type thing. I, I was baptized in the Holy spirit. I heard a, a message over the radio when I was in, uh, in prison about the baptism of the Holy spirit about a month after I'd gotten saved and, and it hit me and, uh, uh, and just wrecked me, messed me up. I was in a prison barracks listening to a radio broadcast and the fire of God jumped on me and I was just messed <laughs> up for about the last yeah. eight hours. And that was through the ministry of Jimmy Swaggart. Mm. And, uh, you know, yeah, big and, time. Me too. I ain't going to tell you how many times I've been ri- driving my, my old, old work truck and just bawling, crying, listening to Jimmy. It's, it's, you know, it was just, uh, I was in that, in that prison for a year and a half and I had that radio station on all the time. And so I just became saturated in the Holy spirit and it really, it really grounded me theologically and how he operates and, uh, and how I could take that in my own life and begin to overcome, uh, and experience the more of God through that. And, and, uh, it was a tremendous blessing, uh, to, to have that all the time when I was, was in prison, yeah. it was a divine set up by the Lord for sure. Always an emphasis on the cross with him. And, 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 and as my studies would go deep, I would look into other things and feel like I was way far out there. But I, every time I would listen to Jimmy Swagger, it always grounded me back to the cross it's about the cross there is it's really an overemphasis on the cross but it's the cross you know what i'm saying and i really appreciate what you know what i'm saying their ministry over the years um yeah they, they're, they're they're a great ministry and mm-hmm. uh and, and and uh boy i'll tell you what if it wasn't for that overemphasis i'm thankful that i've had it in my <laughs> life because it's kept getting out of bounds a few times that's for yeah, sure definitely definitely yeah um so every so we're talking about the the, the secret place and everything flows out of that. It's not. A, it's not about asking permission. It's not about being having a cosign from the big guys. You know that may never happen. For some reason, we think it's going to happen. I don't know why, but for some reason, as a young man, I thought that the pastor was going to. It, it, it kind of happened for you. You was at the event, and he gave you the microphone. But it does. That doesn't always happen. 
it's the Lord who sets everything up. It, but I always thought that that was going to happen. Like the pastor would be like, we're going to let True Seekers, uh, you know, Derek speak, you know, today. And then that would be the start of the ministry. Or you'd go to the Benny Hand meeting and he calls you out of 7,000 people. But because we have these big grandiose encounters with God, we think that, you know what I'm saying? Nobody really knows about the secret place. They don't know what goes on until you come out and you have that glory and your face has changed and you look different and you you're 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 different man i've I've had encounters with god by myself on my living room floor where i'm vibrating and shaking for days and anytime somebody mentions jesus i just start weeping like beauty like the beauty of it you know what i'm saying and so that's the 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 encounters and i like the way you're talking about it it's it's a it's a, a transformation that's that's happening every time that we go into the secret place and we can never, we don't graduate from that. We go deeper into that. We never graduate from going into the secret place uh, to carry the anointing and get the fire and get the message and bring it out. That's what we fall in. That's what we mess up when we get away from the, the simplicity of simply drawing away. No, you're, you're right about that. And we've been given the, uh, the, the blessing of, uh, of, of being able to commune with God. I'll tell you something that really interested uh, that happened to me here this last week and a half or two that'll encourage some of your listeners. Uh, I, I'm I'm a I'm a, a firm believer in prayer. Jesus said Himself, "If you're going to do three things, if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to give, you're going to pray, and you're going to fast." And those are the three trading floors the Lord has called us out to because we've been called to supernaturally broker redemption, and that's the way we do it uh, is through our sacrifice and giving, through prayer and through fasting. But uh, I, I've, I've had a solid prayer life for the last 10 years, and uh, I spend time with God behind closed doors. Uh, uh, there's nothing uh, there's nothing revelatory about that. If you want to encounter God, if you want to have experiences <laughs> with God, you find that place. You know, Jesus said, when you pray, go into your closet, meaning time and yeah. place, and uh, and be diligent about it. I know every time, every day, you're not going to be able to hit that uh, for history, but uh, yeah. but for the most part, you're going to be able to find that time with the Lord. And really, it needs to be put a, a priority on first. But uh, uh, even in my own prayer life, the last few weeks in this meeting, I've been having uh, a difficult time finding the presence of God, and it's been strange. And so I know when I'm even in, in those kinds of uh, modes of not being able to find God in my own prayer life, God's uh, pushing me to find him in a different way. And it took me years to figure this out. And maybe some of your viewers are experiencing this right now. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I couldn't go back to sleep two, three o'clock in the morning, I'd wake up and I'd lay there two, three, four hours and I'd wake up in the morning. I'd feel terrible. Finally, I got, I got it that God was pushing me to get up and pray. And so when I would get up in the middle of the night and pray is when I'd wake up, uh, I would just have the most tremendous times in prayer, just, uh, uh weeping. I just start weeping as soon as I'd hit my knees. When I got out of bed, there'd just be such a brokenness and a tenderness yeah. come upon me uh, that can only be really fashioned in the presence of God. And and uh, I would just have the most successful times in intercession uh, when I'd be in those seasons of prayer in the middle of the night and uh, just a powerful blessing. Took me years to figure out that's what was really going on. So <laughs> if you've got a lazy bone and don't want to get out of the bed in the middle of the night, just obey God. Yeah, just and do you and see what happens. Into something great. But this was really awesome. Uh, this last week and a half, two weeks ago, I really felt God beginning to, to deal with me about, you know, getting up on my own in the middle of the night and seeking him. Huh. And, uh, and so I, I was like, all right, well, fine, I'll do that. Uh, but you need to wake me up. He's like, no, nah, you just need to set an alarm. And it was very, <laughs> I, I, I'd been to the meeting that night and I came home. And when I come home, I don't watch much TV. Uh, only thing I really watch much is uh, reruns of it's supernatural on, on yeah, it's supernatural Sid Roth. Network. <laughs> yeah, yeah. on Amazon fire stick. It's the bomb. And, and I was watching this guy, who was on there and you could tell he was crazy, but he was cool. His name's Steven Brooks. And he was talking about how he gets up in the middle of the night and seeks God. And that after he began doing this, it really opened up the miracle ministry to him. Mm -hmm. And, and he gave an obscure verse out of the book of Proverbs about the, the, the night owl, the, mm -hmm. the night hawk and the cuckoo, meaning these two birds that are at night, we, we associate the night owl with wisdom. And of course the night hawk would be a predator and the, cuckoo we associate him with being nuts and he was talking about that was really the secret and i mean in the middle of this god dealing with me about starting to get up in the middle of the night because i'm not encountering him the way that i want to be encountering him he's like i'm trying to show you something different and you know jesus he crept off in the middle of the night a lot of times to seek god that's what he did we read about that in the gospels and this was so crazy i i 
I've been having this, you know, shift in my heart about doing this. And then yesterday morning, I got up early. The Lord woke me up. And this morning I got up early, but I went to minister at my tent last night in Carbondale and I pull into the tent lot through and I'm not kidding you. A huge night hawk is right there when I pull in. Yeah. I've never seen a night hawk before in my life. <laughs> I got a picture of him. And and I'm seeing this huge night hawk and he just stands still. I don't scare him off when I pull in or anything. And I'm I'm 10 foot away from this thing. All right. This is a predatory bird. He's just hanging out there right by me. And I get time to take pictures of him. But I, I thank God for the invitation to seek him. And uh, and and he is constantly opening up this invitation uh, to seek him and to find him. And it's just incredible that he would do things like put a night hawk at the entrance to my tent lot. Yeah. And uh, I just went to begin to pray that night and I saw the glory of God come in over there. I actually saw a rainbow that was heading straight up and down from heaven to earth. It was just it was just incredible things. And so God really delights in even showing in nature uh, in the natural. Yeah. You know, how, how he wants to have a relationship with us. I said all that to say this because that's what the cross was all about. And the invitation of the cross is all about is about becoming one uh, through death to ourselves. He had to die to himself to have us and we need to die to ourselves to have him. And these encounters, you know, they condition us really to tell you the truth for the rejection. Like you were talking yeah. about, uh, you, you'd think that man of God would have you come up and say something. Probably be that man of God that threw you up underneath the bus later on, but that's a whole nother story for yeah. another episode. And you know, these encounters with God, they condition us for uh, uh, rejection. They condition us for isolation. They condition us to still carry his love in a world that doesn't want him. And uh, it's an incredible thing. That's deep, man. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to um, go down this vein a little bit more because I heard someone else say it just yesterday or the day before and it was interesting to me and then, and then you actually repeated it um the the fact that the realms that we have gone down with the lord the different dimensions and realms of glory and impartation and the secret chambers that quite literally you know some people literally go to their grave without even knowing the mysteries and things that we've seen but if we're obedient and we learn how to do this you mentioned being able to take people with us into those realms. I remember years ago, and I forgot the the the, the people's names, but it was a it was a prophetic meeting, and uh, it was a a, a white it was a it was a mother and her son. Son was in his twenties, and uh, they were delivered. But they would go, they would have prayer meetings in their living room and have visitation, and you know, people stuck to the carpet and can't get up, and God just changing people with the fire, and so they would just do these meetings and say. We're just going to welcome you into our living room. And they would travel churches. You know, we're going, to, we're going to welcome you to the living room. And that same glory that was in the living room, they created an atmosphere there uh, through prayer and being able to take people with them. So now you're kind of like in this realm, just sitting there in the service, being able to, if you're willing to go to those realms of glory with them. And we have the power to do that. Um, However that looks for different people, that definitely it's uh, through a life laid down and through, through prayer, but it's, it's through faith. Like if you can imagine it as a man thinketh in his heart, like you said, there's no ceiling when it comes to God, like the depths of his glory and the mysteries of heaven, as much as you want, he's willing to show you, but you have to be the one who's ready to receive it. And to seek him for those things. But how how do we do that? How do we, like for those people who have seen those mysteries and stuff, do we just talk about it and then press in? What what would that look like in a meeting where you would you would do something like that to somebody to encounter that 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 fire, man? Just start talking about it sometimes, I know, right? Oh yeah, that's uh that's uh that's really where it's at. And um last night we had an encounter service here in the meeting. And, and I spent more time building people's faith to, to move into that encounter than anything. The first thing is this, is that you've had to have encounters to pull play, people into the place of encounters. Uh, because I, I can't make you for hungry for something that I've never ate myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so it's really interesting. Well, Moses, what about you, what, I mean, what, what, what about you talking about it, though? Like, doesn't that kind of like build like the, uh, the uh, intrigue and man, I want to know more, man. Keep, you, you know what I'm saying? Because some people don't even think this stuff is possible, you know? 
It isn't. Uh, but I always I minister biblically from encounters that happen. Like yeah. last night, I was ministering from Isaiah chapter six, where he saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And you look at Isaiah's encounter with the Lord and what his ministry was like before five chapters of woe and judgment, woe and judgment. <laughs> then after he has an encounter with the Lord, he comes back and drops more revelation about the Lord Jesus Christ, first coming and second coming and his kingdom than any other prophet in the Bible. And so the, the encounter brings upon exponential growth. I want people to understand that right now. You begin to grow exponentially after you've encountered God. Uh, you know, you may understand the Lord, you may have a ministry, but until you've encountered God, it can't become the earth shaking manifestation that he's intended to be. And so when Isaiah saw God, all right, when he saw the pattern that was in heaven and he got sent back, there was that apostolic impartation functioning in his life after he'd been commissioned by the Lord. Um, I'll, I'll begin to share, you know, biblical stories and about how they parallel in my own life with encounters that I've had. And it just stirs a faith up in somebody to begin to hunger after those things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest things about having encounters with God is this. The greatest visitations I've ever had from God came at times in my life where I was the least likely for him to come. It was in times to tell you the truth where he should have fired me uh, through my own uh, disobedience. And I'm not talking about open sin uh, through my own uh, failures. And the best thing about God is this, is when you're at your end, he shows up to show you you're really just beginning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he does that to show you how powerless you are. But but I just begin to, to instruct people that, you know, their hunger is the number one thing that can pull on God to, to, to make these things happen. Yep. Uh, their desperation is the number one magnet for, mm -hmm. for these things to begin to happen. And I just begin to share experiences about what's happened in my own life. And the glory of God just comes. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just fills the place. You can't, you can't get away from it. And, and people begin to be touched by the Holy spirit, uh, in different ways. I mean, we've had all kinds of reports of people encountering angels and, and having visions and, and, uh, uh, but it all, it all comes back to their destiny being unlocked. And this is what these encounters do because, you know, we're not from this world originally and we have to be connected with our source, uh, to begin to get the feed of where, who we really are, and where we're really going and what we're supposed yeah. to be doing. That's good. You're talking about just sharing, the, you know what I'm saying, your own personal encounters and then sharing scriptures that kind of back that up or kind of build the, in, in the uh, I say intrigue, but builds faith, right? Because don't the scriptures say that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God? When they hear it, you have to speak it out. When they hear it, it builds their faith and they want more and they can expect more. And Man, as as far as you're willing to believe or as far as you're willing to stretch your imagination, God's willing to meet you there. Um, I, I remember like and it changes the way that we walk in power and authority to and it changes the way we pray and it change that the, changes the way we bind and loose on heaven and earth. We don't do it asking maybe God's going to lose something. We're like, you know what? He's given me the, the authority to you know, release the Holy Spirit upon you, release blessings, re, re, you know what I'm saying, release the demons off of you, like, and, and to pray, not hoping that God would do it, but to, to, to be certain that when I pray for you, God's going to encounter you. And when, when I change that, that realm of thinking, I'm talking to people on the phone from the other side of the world, and I know that when I pray, God encounters this person. They just begin to weep, and God shows up, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit over the telephone. It wasn't like by accident, or maybe it's going to happen. Like I know for a fact that when I speak this as a son, you're going to encounter what I have. You want what I have. Just like they were. It's, it's, it's really deep because it's like, the whole thing with uh, Simon the Sorcerer, they come and say, hey, man, what do you have? Like, what is that? Like, I've got all this other stuff, but what is that? Okay, you really want to know what that is? This is what it is. And if you want it, it's Jesus. You have to lay down your life. You have to follow him. You've tried everything else. Try him. See what happens. And, and, and he encounters people, man. It's really good. Um, I really got one more question for you. I've asked a couple people. Uh, about this a couple I asked Pastor Brian he's a good friend of mine Pastor Brian from the cave ministries here asked a couple other people but here's this idea right so understanding demons understanding the spirit realm Jesus talks about that when a, a spirit is cast an evil spirit is cast out or off of someone that it goes to dry places that it um it it goes out and gets seven other demons stronger than itself and it tries to come back to the same home the same habitation the same person 
uh, unless that home is swept clean and, uh, and it, it, you know, it doesn't have a residency there anymore. But if it does, if the person's not changed, it comes back and it says the state of that person is worse off than it was before. Hear me out. You as a um, evangelist, uh, you go to some of those, you go to the areas where they are, where those demons are, people who are strung out on dope selling their body all full of demons right you preach the message they find healing they get a touch they get a they get a taste my fear and you correct this theology or you just let me know um my fear is that they'll get loose from these demons and they um don't get planted in a good church the evangelist comes through does his thing leaves and then there's not there's no discipleship and things and that's definitely happening that is a woe man that's definitely happening what would your response to to that be i think that's pretty detrimental and what do you do to make sure that that doesn't happen when you go to a, a new city that is a good question and this is uh this is how we're working now on that now the worst thing that can happen is somebody receive the gospel and it touched their life and them turn around uh, it's not a good thing. It never is a good thing yeah. because you've taken in the light and it's really worse for you to take in the light and then go back into the darkness after you've taken in the light. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's not a good thing for that to happen. But, uh, right now we're really wanting to establish again, uh, just the, the ancient apostolic foundations of, of, of the book of Acts church. And we're wanting to uncover those. Uh, we're planning house churches. That's what yeah, we're doing. That's good. We're, we're, we're building on relationships where we actually get to know people. Exactly. And, uh, and so this is, uh, this is, this is my heart and this is what I'm going to continue to do. And this is where I believe the church in America is going and there's not going to be some people who are going to like what I've got to say. Uh, but, but real legitimate church buildings that are in churches that are in buildings, they're going to make that transition to apostolic order and becoming an apostolic hub for an area, or they're going to go out of business. Uh, and the gospel is going to start going back into people's homes again. Mm -hmm. And the body of Christ is going to be connected house to house uh, in fellowship, breaking bread daily. Yeah. I believe one of the greatest reasons the body of Christ is suffering so much sickness in the United States is because of disconnection and no communion. Uh, communion is very essential. And uh, we really need to be taking the Lord's Supper a lot more than we think. And we need to be taking it together uh, because we need each other. And so when, when we go into these areas and people get touched, they're looking for something to connect to, whether they're a saved person or an unsaved person. Yeah. They're looking for something to be a part of. Yeah. And that's something that they're supposed to be a part of isn't even a local church. It's the body of Christ. <laughs> and uh, it is. That's what, yeah. they're, that's what they're to become a part of. And so we're, we're, not, we're not functioning according to the blueprint. Yeah. We're really not. And, and, and the Lord has been, has been, has been impressing that upon me about getting back to the simplicity of the ways that the apostles did things organically before, uh, through the preaching of the gospel, miracles, signs, and wonders, simple faith, encounter, uh, fellowship and communion. And so we're striving, uh, to, uh, to actually plant home churches. And, uh, this, this does a, a great thing right there people that are frustrated in the call of ministry where there's not room for them in a local church where it's a one man show. Yeah. They can minister at their home and God can establish them, uh, in, in the community and their community, uh, uh their home can be a, uh, become a lighthouse for the gospel. It's quick, it's cost effective. And most of all, it's scriptural. <laughs> and so, yeah. and so the person who got touched, they've got a place to go. That's not in a church building. That's full of a bunch of religious garbage, mm -hmm. you know, that's full of a bunch of politics. We lose want to one get bondage and pick up another one. There. You lose the bondage of go. addiction and alcohol, well, you, and but you pick up the other bondage of religion and judgment and all these other doctrines that come with it. That's anti-biblical, you know. And you know, when some religious ninny in the church hurts them, a person that's just come to the Lord yep. because they're trying to pull them up to their false standards so quickly, and then they get they get a bitter taste in their mouth, and now yep. you've won them. But they turn around and poison them uh, uh, because the people that were there, they never paid the price to see them burped in the kingdom anyway. So they're not going to love them properly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's really what it basically boils down to. So we're trying to reduce it to everybody being a part. Yeah. Uh, we're hooking up tons of intercessors, what we're, what we're doing right now. Just people, normal people, blue collar people 
that want to be part of what God's doing. And so it's my goal to put everybody to work. Uh, in an organic manner that's not centered around a building in a one day a week meeting uh, to where the people that, that are captured uh, can be connected to the body of Christ, uh, the mystical body of Christ, the worldwide body of Christ, the universe body of Christ, because it's not only us here on the earth, but it, this is even this in heaven. And uh, we're all that's what we're trying to install at foundations of the house, the family of God that Paul speaks of in the book of Ephesians being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and uh, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone and the, the, the apostolic and the prophetic calling uh, actually putting men down in a place of humility instead of on a platform in a throne called a chair, uh, you know, where they, where they, where they, where they manipulate over a group of people for a lofty title and a three piece suit. And so, we're trying to bring this thing down to ground level again, where it affects communities, yeah. uh, house to house, organically. And I think we're going to receive, really see some great, great results from that over the next year. It's already been working. We've been seeing success with it. And that, the house meeting paradigm is just, uh, is just a whole lot different than the building meeting paradigm. Yeah. I'm not saying the building paradigm doesn't have, uh, doesn't have its advantages. But for it to survive here in the upcoming years in the United States, yeah. building paradigms are going to have to turn the apostolic hubs that yeah. feed home churches. And that's the way that happened in the book of Acts. Yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of churches trying to go back to that now where they'll still have the, you know what I'm saying, big mega church, but they encourage what they call cell groups. And it's like they have different people's houses that they meet out throughout the week, which is really good, too. It started in the church. It's going to I mean, it started in the home. It's going to end in the home. I got born again at a, 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 a um, prayer meeting at somebody's apartment. You know what I'm saying? And there's something in me that just organic. Hey, you want guys want to come over for prayer, you know, and have seen the same thing. And that was kind of like imparted to me, right? That's how I came to the Lord and kind of, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, um, that's what's so critical for these new believers to find an environment like that, where people are seeking God, because the last thing they really need to hear is a four point message. You know what I'm saying? And, and a couple of nice what, songs. That's, that's, that's what ran me out of my mega church, man. You know, as people, as people, as I brought, I bring people to church with me about, uh, you know, kids whose parents are struggling with heroin addiction and stuff, and the pastor's preaching a, a serving a set, a, a preaching a Sunday morning service about seven keys to financial freedom, and I'm like, man, these people need the Holy Ghost, like that's what they need, like an encounter, you know. So, well, so you, so you see a need there, you just yeah. feel that need, right? I mean, that well, you, you, you kind of you kind of feel that way for a reason. When you open up your home to people. It's the ultimate act of selflessness because you're becoming completely vulnerable. Think about that for a minute. Oh, yeah. Your house is, and that's everything you got is in your house, probably. So you're opening your home up. That means you're opening your life up or in a property that was paid for by a bunch of people to keep folks out of their house. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, because they, they, they're scared of what would actually happen if they did come up in their home. And so, you know, when we get these converts, I want to see them connected with people uh, more than anything. Not not as much as I want to see them connected to a ministry. I want to see them connected to people where they have personal relationships. So when things get tough, they, they've got somebody they can call on. Uh, they've got somebody that will love them through. And they've got somebody they can connect to uh, in a personal manner that actually cares about them. Yep. That's what it's about. Well, JD, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, let's end out in prayer, man, because I think there's people listening right now who were talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Holy Spirit, the the quiet place, the secret place of God, of just kind of going away and getting alone with Jesus. But all of that usually comes out of an, an encounter. Start somewhere. It could start by yourself. It could start at a prayer meeting. It could start listening or watching a podcast for the first time if you've never even heard of the holy spirit like they talked about in the book of acts some of the people some of the believers hadn't even even heard of this baptism there so for people who haven't experienced it and for people who have but it's been a very long time let's pray that god will invade their life and he'll uh fill them again with it with his fire let's do that i'll, I'll let oh. you i'll let you start yeah, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, I thank you that faith has uh, been stirred through the testimony between uh, myself and, and Truth Seeker. And, and I just thank you, God, uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to 
encourage people to come after you. That's what it's all about. And uh, right now, uh, I just, uh, even as we're praying and we're joining together and we agree in this, uh, I just I just release your fire, your blanket of fire, the man on a people again, to fall upon your body again. Oh, that you would dress your bride in fire, holy fire. I just declare that. And I decree that right now over them uh, that you'll bring them into a greater level of encounter uh, to them than they've ever had to fulfill your commission for their lives in the earth. I declare that and I decree that today uh, as they put faith up that right now they're even feeling in their bodies the physical, tangible presence of Almighty God and that you are baptizing them fresh and new in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen and amen. Lord. Fire of God. Awesome. Well, JD, you go live um a lot. Thank uh, you, Lord. Nightly. Uh with the well, thank uh thank you for having me on today, man. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. Yeah, go ahead and share your links, man, because you go live nightly with the revivals and stuff, and people can watch those live services on Facebook and uh and you got a bunch of stuff on the website as well. So go ahead and drop your links or whatever where people can can check you out when you go live on on Facebook. Yeah, you can friend me. Just send me a friend request to JD Ramsey. I put them on my personal page, but also it's on the ministry page on Facebook at JD Ramsey and the Last Great Awakening. Uh, or you can get online. Check my website out at www.kingdomministries.com. All right, JD. Well, I appreciate it, brother. We'll be in touch soon, and uh, I'll talk with you here shortly, man. Thank you for coming on. All right. Thanks, Derek. We'll see you later, buddy. All right, brother. Bless. All right, ladies and gentlemen, J.D. Ramsey. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, so it looks like I might have an error here. Anyway, on the uh, on the back end. So I was getting some um some feedback on his end. The internet can do that sometimes. So uh, really enjoyed that man. Covered some deep <laughs> some deep subject matter intimacy with the lord and going into that hidden prayer chamber that's where everything is birthed out of that's where everything comes from that's what it's about um if you want it if you if you're believing for it it's there for you it's there for you whatever you you can believe god for it will show up and meet you there so that's why it's it's good to get into the scriptures for yourself that's why it's good to um b- believe god and um Look to him, not to look for, for men or, you know, a lot of times we have vision. This comes early on. It's a lesson you got to learn. You have a vision and uh, you try to go to other people to get them to co-sign for you. Maybe the person who led you to Christ or maybe your pastor or your elder or your guru or whatever. You have a vision and you bring it to them and they just don't agree with it. They feel like it's off or something. You have to know within your heart of hearts for yourself. You have to know what God has called you to do. And if, if God's the one who, uh, who brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. If he gave you the vision, he'll give you the provision. You don't need anybody to co-sign for you. You don't need any, any fame of like, you don't need any renown. And the, 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 the most, you know, I know people who carry the fire, who have never been on television and probably never will. They don't have ministries that have a name. These are just people who work regular jobs at Walmart and stock groceries, but they carry the anointing. You know, everybody's calling is different. Everybody's in a different spot. But to know who you are in Christ and, and to be authentic with that, don't be scared. Know who God's called you to be and, and walk in that, run in that. Um, really enjoyed it for the episode. Um. I like JD. I do a um I actually built this website. It's really cool. Go check it out. Um kingdomcallministries.com. Check out his website. Like I said, he goes live on Facebook when they do their tent revivals and 
He's he's out the box, man. He's different, and that's what we need. Seen a lot of people set free through his ministry, um, and, and people that I know personally in Fairview went and set up down here. But he goes all over the place. I want to give a shout out to somebody right now. I got a I got a uh, a package in last night in my uh, PO box, and someone sent me a gift. This is a, a friend of mine. He's also a patron. Shout out. But I want to go ahead and plug him and show off this artwork. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast on the audio end, you won't be able to see this. But if you want to go to my Instagram, uh, I will put it on there. Or, or you can go to his Instagram and actually see the work that he does. But um, holding this this piece up now that I got in the mail, this is the Flower of Life piece that I got from my good friend Casey Almaker, um, who lives in Australia. So we're good friends. We, we hang out on Discord and talk, and he's pro- was probably working on one of these during uh, one of the, the School of the Mystic sessions, so he joins us in there from time to time. But it's the uh, Flower of Life symbol, and if you look really close, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's actually grooves in it cut out with um, stones in there, like ground-up stones. If you can see that within the grooves, pretty powerful. Um, those are chrysocala. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. Uh, it's like tur- green and turquoise gemstones. Chrysocala. I, I'm probably butchering that. I butcher a lot of stuff. Um, but it's beautiful. Real beautiful. And my wife stolen this from me already. I just got it last night. But I took the crystals off of it. She kind of turned it into a crystal grid, which is really cool. Um, there's uh, some plastic over it so that the... Um, I don't know if it's plastic or... Oh, probably a mold actually, but just so that the um the the crystals don't come out or or, or move. So really cool. So she, my wife turned this into a crystal grid. Had everything set up. I took I took it off, and she's gonna be mad that I took it off. But yeah, really cool stuff, man. I got some really cool uh friends and really cool uh people who listen to the podcast. Got you know just in that realm by itself. Obviously, if, yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, you're really cool anyway. But um, that's cool. Go check out his stuff. Casey Almaker on um, Instagram, but he also has a store on Etsy. Just go to Etsy.com and you can probably go into the search and type in wooden sacred geometry, wooden sacred geometry. It's beautiful. Good stuff, man. I've got sacred geometry all around me, all on me, all of my tattoos and stuff. Really love shapes. Really love it. So yeah, that's what I wanted to uh, plug that. Let's see, what else is there to talk about? And I've been trying to keep up with the chat. You guys have been going off over here in the chat, man. i um been trying to uh, keep up with it, but it's moving too fast. A lot of people asking good good questions and stuff. Someone um, mentioned spirit guides. And uh, should we, as believers, um, look into spirit guides, um, channeling spirits and stuff? And I, I did a little documentary on um, channeling spirits and... Um, and channeling the Holy Spirit, right? Right? And then even that word was even mentioned on this podcast. Uh JD mentioned channeling the Holy Spirit. You become a channel for spirits. And many people are cha- channels for spirits unaware, don't even know it. But um you have to be careful. Uh you don't just man, I don't you know, a lot of people they want to see something so bad. We talk about these encounters. We talk about demons. We talk about spirit guides and angels appearing. Uh, some people want stuff to happen so bad that something happens and it's not good. Like you open up yourself to unclean spirits or you open up yourself to the ghost that used to live in your house. You know what I'm saying? Who's a pedophile? Like, come on, like something like you got to be careful, right? You got to be careful. Um, and and that's my story. I'm writing a book right now. It's kind of my magnum opus, but I'm trying to put everything in there. And it comes from breaking down the spirit realm from my perspective. And it's a biblical perspective. And it's some ideas that I guarantee that you've never heard before. I, some of you have. I see a uh, murderous Herodias. I think that's your name. But I know you, you're talking about it on here. Um, you mentioned about the devil and Lucifer and all of these things being used by God or being a piece of God. Like that's the idea that I'm, I'm putting in, in this book. And so, um, I, w- I was covering a, a, a lot of that stuff as I was writing, but 
my whole thing is like when 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 I first got into spirituality or it really wasn't spirituality. It was essentially just the occult, right? I got into the occult as a teenager and ended up uh, opening up doors to spirits and beings that uh, I had no idea who or what they were. I was doing all kind of rituals. I was doing Satanism, doing Wicca, um, necromancy, all of these things. And I have all these books and I do all of the rituals because I wanted to open up a gateway. I wanted to open up a portal for something to come through. I wanted to know that it was real. And I had had encounters in the church some years before that had always been fascinated with the, those realms or whatever. But, um, I had encounters since I was a, a baby, really. Like I remember like four years old having encounters with shadow beings in my bedroom. I was always intrigued by, by that realm I opened up doors by doing all of these rituals and um, being attacked by elemental spirits and stuff and um, ended up getting possessed as a teenager. Um, I think I was 15 and um, was going crazy, going schizophrenic, hearing voices, being pulled in and out of trances at will by these, whoever these entities were. I did like all of the rituals and I just wanted to, I, I try to kind of use my body as a Ouija board. And I know that sounds crazy because it is. If you're doing it, stop. Don't do that tried to use my body as a Ouija board pretty much and just said, look, any spirits that want to come through, I want to meet you. And I did all these rituals, man, and all of these things and I ended up opening up myself and I got possessed and I, man, I was going crazy, going insane. And so that's what drew me to God. That's what drew me to Jesus because Jesus has authority over all those spirits, right? Why spend tr time trying to contact those spirits when you can go straight to the one who has dominion and authority over those spirits, right? I go straight to the source. I'm looking and reading the comments here. Christy Lee is talking about spirit contact and hearing God. And she talks about going straight to the source, going straight to the great spirit, God herself, versus trying to contact entities or spirits, right? But I will say this. I'm not knocking spirit contact, and I don't. I don't knock. We're talking about angelic contact on here. We're talking about contact with Jesus. Um, I believe if you're doing it through the right medium, which is Christ, which is essentially love manifested in the fullest extent in human form was Jesus, right? That's what, who Jesus is, love made into a person. If you're doing it through love, I believe that God will open up those realms for you and, and you can experience the angelic. You can experience spirits at different levels, especially if we're talking about that God uses everything. God uses these spirits. These spirits have names. These spirits have functions. They carry essences or vibrations with them that make you feel a certain type of way. There's a spirit of love, spirit of joy, the Holy Spirit, uh, spirit of confusion, spirit of slumber, spirit of deep sleep. These spirits that present themselves before God. I know I'm going too deep. It's going to be in the book. These spirits present themselves before God. Ask them, ask God what they can do on the earth. And he lets them go down and be different spirits over nations and principalities and powers. Trust me, I've been writing my butt off. He's talking about waking up in the, in the wee hours of the morning. And I've been waking up early and uh, getting a big cup of coffee and come sitting down in here and just writing writing, writing. And sometimes I'll hit a vein and just, I can't wait to share it with you guys. It's going to be a while, but I'm in the process of showing you this biblically and showing you, uh, this from a personal experience, not just theology, not just, I've been on both sides. All of this is covered. I've been in the occult. I've, I've done the rituals. I've seen the demons. They I've literally not in the spirit, physically have appeared and attacked me. Now, I don't, I was, it, w it wasn't only me. It wasn't just on some drugs or anything like that. It was multiple people with me. We were attacked by a spirit that physically appeared in this realm. You would think that that would drive me away. Stay away, man. It drew me even deeper into the occult because I wanted to learn how to summon those entities to go out and do my bidding, which is what happened to me. Um, I've been on that end and I've been on the other end in the glory of God and beauty and awe and wonder and the glory of the stars and the vibration of the elements and to see everything on both sides. So I think I, I could speak on this, man. I've, I've been on both sides of it. So I'm trying to give you an objective look, not from just somebody who's coming from an occultic side or somebody who's coming from a Christian side. 
but looking at it all for what it is and ev- and all everything everything all of the interviews i've done you guys know the names i've done the studying i've had those people on it's funny i'm about to say this i don't agree with everybody and it's kind of an inside joke that we talked about yesterday on christy lee's podcast but i don't agree with it all i had to preface that that's <laughs> an inside joke it's funny though but I, it begins to, to to paint a picture in a big part of it we have to understand is the sovereignty of god and here in the chat murderous horrendous Her- herodias whatever i don't not sure how to say it but you bring a great point that god uses angels spirits and demons he uses it all he uses it all for your good for your betterment and I've given some things in this book, and and I'm I'm plugging the book now. I'm just excited about it, really. But I'm just trying to get it all out there, like everything you've heard me. I'm just trying to my magnus opus. I don't know how many pages, but it's gonna. I'm just getting it out, man. Um, but it's all in there, and I'm giving you a biblical look at it. And you don't, you're not. They don't teach this in church. They don't teach you that God allows the devil to tempt you or allows Satan to tempt you or allows spirits to tempt you. Like it is God. God is all God is, is, is in everything. There's nothing that exists that God is not there. There's nowhere you can go to run from his spirit or run from his presence. Everything that you look at, everything that exists comes out of this essence of God here. O Israel, the Lord is one. There's a oneness. That's why I love this. I don't, I didn't wear my necklace today, but that's why I love this symbol. I love the symbol of the uh, the flower of life. It is a wheel, literally a wheel within wheels, right? And passing through, and they're all they're all interconnected. They're all touching the flower of life. Um, to me, it represents, even from a Christian perspective, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, and how we're all interconnected. We're all one. We're one body. We're different members. We act. In different parts everybody can't do what I do I can't do what some of you guys do but you have your calling you have your um, things that you're good at and you guys here have heard me talk about it just given motivation you're trying to do something you're trying to make a um, a mark in the earth for change for good you need to get a team with you you need to get people around you not to play to your strengths, and I've talked about this, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but this is real. Not people who play to your strengths. You need people around you who play to your weaknesses. Just like I talked about last night, what if we had, we have the body of Christ who is literally forms Jesus, like Jesus, like his second coming on the earth when we come together, where two or more are gathered, I am in the midst of you. I'm there. Two or more are, 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 are gathered, I'm there in the midst. And you actually, we actually form Jesus when we come together, love on the earth. Um, different bodies, different parts, different members. What if there were seven legs? What if everybody wanted to just be a leg? It'd be the same thing. You're, this entity with seven legs is walking around. Now maybe, shoot, maybe that's some of the biblical archetypes in the Bible, these monsters and stuff and these things that are built really weird with seven heads and stuff. Maybe everybody wants to be the head. Maybe that's a symbolic look at the church and the body of christ man everybody wants to be the head so you have a seven headed dragon everybody wants to be the the one everybody wants to be him wow right when i said that uh cory mitchell is, is typed it in good stuff one is enough yeah man we it, it, but see the scripture says that christ is the head like he is the head of, of the body and so it's important to talk about this because the you know the modern american church will tell you that just because you don't go to the church or, or or a church that you're not a part of the church which is a lie just because you don't go to a church and they'll have you feeling like they're legit or they're you know like that's the truth and it's not the truth man trust me god has people man in all walks of life in all areas man and he uh if you're led by the spirit you'll take you um to places that you couldn't fathom beyond your wildest dreams 
you can't fathom. You can have a great idea that you want to do these things in life and this dream and this destiny, but it's even it's wilder than that. If your dream doesn't scare you, you need a bigger dream, right? It's going to shake you. And I love it when it starts to happen. You see doors opening up and things like that. So, man, we're all part of that body. We all exist. We need to know our place. Find people again. Like I said, going back to that, find people who play to your weaknesses. I'm a foot. Can't really grab stuff. Can't, can't really hold a cup of coffee. I need a hand. I need eyes. I need ears. I need a left hand. I need a right. If you had two left hands, man, they're just pointed in the same direction. Like, wouldn't that be hard? You have to like twist your body and try to make something happen. We can make it happen. We do what we got to do. Like, well, I hang out with some pretty dysfunctional people. We are the most dis- dysfunctional family. We're the most functional, dysfunctional family on the face of the earth. I'll say that. But we function, man. Right? Find people who are good at the things that you suck at. I go into this all the time. Why, why do we need 17 podcasters? You know, I mean, we can, there's, you know, there's a place for that. But we need, we need a lot more, man. And we need what you're good at. What you, you have a place. Like you have there's somewhere that you fit, wherever that is. There's a ministry for you. There's a ministry of helps. Um, you're good at, at writing. You're good at organizing. Like everybody does something different that they bring to the table. And for us to be able to sit back and look at that and execute, okay, this guy can do this. You can do that. You can do this. And we form the body. Of, that's how the body works. That's how, that's how we, that's how a great organization works and how much more the organism to work the body, which is not an organization, it's an organism to, to work. And it's literally Christ here on earth. I believe it's the second coming. It's him reigning in our hearts and taking that throne of our hearts. That's the second coming. That's what it's about. Um, there's a lot of deep stuff. It's really deep. And I love getting into the deep mysteries of God. But at the end of the day, it's practical. Home sauce is here. He says Voltron. <laughs> he says Voltron. I say Power Rangers now. <laughs> yeah, it's the same picture of them all coming together and forming the body, you know? I think there's a Christian version of that. Like a Christian version of the uh Power Rangers and it was a comic book. It was done pretty cool. I forgot the name of it, but I remember seeing it at the Christian bookstore years ago. It's good stuff. Um I'm gonna read here in the comments, see what we got. Christian uh, says, have y'all ever transformed? Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, Papa says, correct. Knowledge does you no good if you don't use it. Yep. <clears throat> if it's not practical, I mean, how can you use it if it's just a theory? But if it's something, it's, if it's a theory that you make practical and you use it, Like that's the the idea of belief and stretching your faith. I mean, man, I, I grew leaps and bounds when I started to do that and just start believing God for some of the radical things. And I honestly just with like just the mind, man, and 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 the the power of the mind in creating things, creating art, creating events, creating a podcast. Creating a, a a home, create you know what I'm saying. And anything that you want to create and, and and bring here, you use the power of the mind. And so, you know, like I was talking about in prayer and believing that I can create an encounter for you, or just set the atmosphere right for God to encounter you through the Holy Spirit, through the angels. I've had a lot of them. I talk about having countless encounters. I tried to write a bunch of them down in my phone recently just because I've had so many over the years. I don't want to forget about them or even like I said to JD, like I don't want to seem like a spoiled brat, you know, because in those in some of these Christian circles, like people run from church service to church service or from trying to get a word from God or an encounter when you just had a word last week, like somebody spoke to you, prophesied over you last week and then you want to go this week. I used to be me. We used to, I used to love it. I'm addicted to the presence of God. Like I love it, man. It's where all the answers are, man, is in in, in his presence. And so, but you have to learn how to cultivate that for yourself. Like it's good to have a prophet. It's good to have somebody who's sensitive to the spirit who can um, 
act as an oracle of God and speak over you and read you and, and ignite that flame that's within you or bl at least blow on that spark that's already there. Uh, uh, John says that Jesus is the light of the world, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. Um, the, the Hindu literally believe that the sacred heart, we see Jesus with the sacred heart on fire, that, the, that we literally have a fire within us, like a literal fire. Sometimes we have to have somebody to blow upon that fire. It said Jesus breathed upon his disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. The breath blowing upon that fire within you. If you ever started a fire, if you ever been camping, go out there and get a couple coals, get a couple, just a little couple sparks, like he was talking about. Even before we started, he was talking about uh, iron sharpening iron and then even the sparks from that just going out, creating wildfires. Creating that fire, blow up on that fire. And the Bible says to literally fan the flame that is within you, that has been given to you through the laying on of hands and through prophecy. Speak to those things that are not as, uh, uh, that are not as though they were. Build the faith. Create it. What do you want to create? Get what God, get the vision, and then make it practical. Bring it into fruition. Get with God, get the vision, bring it into uh, fruition. He'll give you, if he give you the vision, he'll give you the provision. You got to be in submission. You got to stop, look, and listen. I'm, that's a song. I'm going to write that. <laughs> and then I was about to say write it down. And then Corey here on the chat says, and write it down. Yep. And write it down. I want to invite you guys, man. God's doing some awesome stuff, man. We're going deeper in this thing. I'm believing for more doors are opening up. We have a, a event coming up September the 22nd. It is in Tallahassee, Florida. It's only $5 to attend. It's an all day event, 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. Um, it's going to start off with yoga and breath work. And then my good friend Christy Lee will be there uh, leading uh, a guided meditation and healing. And it's going to be good. She's the real deal. Awesome person. Um, and then later on into the day, there's going to be music and art and dancing and glass blowing and all kinds of cool, crazy hippie stuff, spiritual stuff. Um, but I'll be doing a live podcast there. It's going to be a short one, but we're going to be doing a live podcast. We'll do q and A. I'll be interviewing somebody and um, doing that with my first live podcast in front of a, a crowd and audience. Excited about that. It's going to be fun. Then I'll be performing at uh, 930. My set is I'll be doing an hour set and I'm getting um, getting some ideas. I'm trying to get uh, intricate with it. I'm trying to see how I can morph the set and turn it into more than just rapping or speaking. And I'm literally trying to what we talked about, talking about creating a uh, um, atmosphere. I just got some kind of weird up uh, <laughs> weird uh, message here. I don't know. Somebody gave a donation or something. I don't know. It's just HTTPS. I guess it's an error. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Somebody uh, commented, uh, sick, donated, and their name is 666. Um, $3.84. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, which e equals 6. Add those numbers up. It, it equals 6. So it's. Six 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 six. Yeah, the number of man. Six protons, six neutrons, six elect electrons is encoded on this planet we live on. That's three eleven. Thank you for the donation, by the way. Thank you guys. Um. Yeah, lost that train of uh, train of thought. Well, anyway, okay. Yeah, the event. Come see me at the event. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm trying to see how I can bring you guys into that realm. Obviously, the music does it by itself, but I think that the live show should be a little bit more. Um, interactive to just kind of pull those people in there. Healing, I'm believing for it all. So it's going to be good. September 22nd, Tallahassee, Florida. Shanti Fest is where we'll be doing it. Like I said, Christy Lee is going to be doing something in the morning. I'm doing a live podcast there, and we're going to be uh, doing a full set at 930. So if you want to meet me, you want to hang out, be the perfect place to do it, Tallahassee, Florida. Also, we have November the 2nd in Mobile, Alabama, for those of you guys who want to hang out too, we got another concert. It's going to be probably something very similar. 
November the 2nd at the Lacey House. All the info's on my website. You can go there and check that stuff out. That's going to be another $5 donation. Uh, it's going to be good stuff. So that's what I have coming up. If anybody wants to get me in your city, if you want to book me or anything like that, just contact me through the website, and we'll see about making it happen. If you guys can cover the expenses and provide an audience or whatever, and maybe be able to come out and make something happen. So um, get with me. Contact me through the through the website. We got a bunch of uh, teachers and, uh, and, and and spiritualists and, and musicians and stuff that we can bring, and we can really, we're going to, we, we can host our own festivals. We know enough people who uh, who, who would show up, and so we're we're definitely going to do that very soon. Get plugged in. Um, Corey says where where November second in Mobile. I live there. It's going to be at what we're calling the Lacey House. It's uh, a good friend of ours, Deborah Lacey. Uh, Justin Caldwell's mom. It's going to be at her home. They ha- they own this like really big log cabin type house in the woods. It's really nice. And so we did our album release party there um, and had a concert. And so it was really good. So we're going to be using that and kind of doing a house show. And uh, yeah, so all the, we- all the info is on my website. It's going to be good. A lot more stuff coming. Um, yeah, so make sure you guys stay tuned in. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and do that. If you haven't subscribed on the podcasting apps, make sure you do that as well. There's links in the descriptions of all of this stuff that I'm talking about. Um, I thank you guys for the support. Every little bit helps. Every little donation, every $2 here, $2 there, every $100 here. Thank you guys, man, for for supporting. I want to give a special shout out to a couple people right now who are supporting at the Diamond Body level. Um, let's see here while I have it pulled up. I'm gonna give a shout out to Adam Brink. You're awesome. Look, this is so weird, man. Like Adam Brink showed up at, at my last show. I didn't even know it was him. Like we're in a, we're in the woods, man. This is a little house in the woods and there's just random people there. And I'm like, it's familiar, man. Who is this guy? And I don't know if they know people or they just show up. I don't want to just like assume that they're here to see me or something, but there was a lot of people who traveled from across the country to be there. Um, Adam Brink was one of them. Shout out to Adam Brink, but we did get the meet and he's just been a blessing to, to this platform. And, uh, so thank you, Adam. Um, giving at the diamond body level. Thank you, Adam Brink. Thank you, Noah, no cab in the chat, man. No cab in the chat. Thank you for your, um, support at the diamond body level and what you bring to the table the body something different and uh and it's welcome and it's love man thank you for being a part of what we're building here also give a shout out to benny and callie uh thank you guys for giving as well at the diamond body level it really means a lot man you guys literally are enablers everybody who's been given some of you since day one and so I, I really do appreciate it and thank you. And at this point, it's so many people, it'd be just hard just to kind of go down the list. But man, thank you, every, thank you everybody who, who has you know, played a, a, a role in helping create this platform financially because it does take that. Um, thank you, Chris and Nicole Bars for giving at the celestial body level, man. That's big too. Christy Lee, you've been a day one. You've given... A lot of money to help fund what I'm doing here. You've been a freaking key player in this. Danny Guerrero, man. Um, Home Sauce. Like, I can, I, I, I kind of feel bad for mentioning any names because there's so many people now that I can't thank everybody. But just look at the bottom of the screen here if you're listening on the, uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you can see just the name scrolling there. Those are all people um, who are who are patrons who support me from month to month. And I literally couldn't do it without you. So again, thank you. I'm still, it's, I can't, it's hard to even think about what, what this whole thing is now. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard to think about it that I'm, you know, able to do this because of you guys and you guys believe in it so much that you're, you, you want to support and you want to see it reach more people and you want to see it go further. And this literally is for a lot of you, this is your church family. Like this is, this is it, man. You know, we do the School of the Mystics. People are asking about that. School of the Mystics every Thursday night at uh, 7 p.m. Central. Um, we're going to be doing that. Uh, that's a com- the community aspect. Literally, we are focusing on hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We break down into groups, uh, learn how to speak prophetically over one another. 
if that's what you want, it's there for you. Not everybody wants the hands on. Some people want to stay in the corners and you could do that too. You don't, you're not pressured into anything. We'll say that, you know, but it's a video chat and it's a bunch of us that, that show up and, uh, and we, and we grow together and we learn together and it's very practical. We're building community. Uh, the discord app is in the description as well. That's everybody gets access to, to the discord app. Um, it's really cool. Like I, I always have discord pulled up. I have it pulled up right now. And, um, soon as we get off the podcast i'll probably jump in there and say hello to some people and hang out and we build there and it it gives people community and people who have these crazy ideas and not not anybody to talk to they want to know that they're not crazy they need some they need to talk to somebody who's been through something similar and that's kind of where that stems from so uh the discord community um creating community if you build it they will come this is living proof i love you guys and everything about you and what we're doing man um each and every person definitely has a place here we are the misfits we are the outcasts but you know what um we are the the light bearers we are the the ones who carry that light so man get plugged in if you plugged in somewhere else man do that but if you're looking for community you're looking for people we do life here it's not just a podcast we do life we i go on vacation with some of the people uh, who I've met, you know, o- o- through this thing, right? I have really close friends that I'm accountable to and who I speak into their life. And so it's a, it really is a organic family thing. So if you're looking for that, join the Discord. The link is in the description. Uh, join us Thursday nights on Patreon for as little as a dollar, if that's all you can do, 99 cents, whatever it is, man. It's like just do something, man. So with that, I appreciate and love every one of you guys. I'm going to try to read through these comments one last time here at the end. Just shout out to everybody uh, here. Corey Mitchell, what up? Um, Danny again. Christian, Christy Lee. Uh, Christy Folks or Christy Johnson, I'm not sure. You let me know which is the what I should call you. But my good friend Christy, uh, thank you for everything, all the support. You see her name there at the bottom as well. Colton, man. I just need to just, we just need to do a patron episode where I just talk about how cool each one of these people are Dan Oskopinski. Thank you for the support over the years too, Dan. Love you, man. Um, yeah, with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. That's pretty much it. 7 PM tonight, join Patreon. You'll get a link in your email to join via zoom chat. You can join all of this stuff is you can do it on your cell phone or your computer. So there's people at work sitting, going to the bathroom or going to lunch break and they're joining in the conversation. So wherever you are, you get access to all that stuff. So, I got to jump off here. I feel like I'm rambling, but I got that stuff out. Um, We're building, baby. Love you guys, man. Wow. Murderous Herodias says, uh, was on a negative suicide path till I found Truth Seekers music and podcast. That's the best way to end it. This is strategic, guys. Y'all know that. I'm open with it. It's strategic. And just how it looks, <laughs> just how it looks like other than that, you, you know, you, what you see is what you get, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, we have to go to where people are going to find us and, uh, and they, if we carry hope, if we carry truth, then we can impart that. We can impart it. Not just for you. He don't heal you just for you. He don't give you the re- revelations just to blow your mind, which he does. But it's it's for you to share. It's for you to articulate. Find a way to do that. Um, but there's love and there's hope and there's peace for every one of you. And I I I I do. I know the severity of that. And, you know, there's people, and we have to just be open and authentic with the truth, what we believe and what we have to impart, uh, because there are people who um. They're not here with us anymore. I know I, I talked about it on the la- one of the last episodes, but I got tear- teared up, man. This is real life. Real life. No celebrity status. It's real life. Real people doing real life who care, genuinely care. And if you're looking for those people, they're here. Love you guys. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Uh, we'll do it again next week um or we'll do it tonight too but 
I got I got a surprise interview that I'm going to do. Somebody really big, man. I love it when I'm able to um interview people that I really like or I really look up to. And uh I got a name. I don't even want to say the name yet. I kind of want I don't like to like I, I I like I believe in speaking things into existence, but I don't I don't like I like to move in silence. I like every move to be a calculated step. I don't want nobody in the past. I've had like, I've had, if I was to announce a concert when I was still trying to do the Christian thing, see, God had to pull me out of the churches, man. Cause that was always a place of comfort for me. And while I was being led down the new age path or the occult path or whatever to bring Christ in that, um, the comfortable spot was in the church. Cause as I was going down those paths, um, it was hard. It's hard just to do that anyway. It's a, a lot of darkness in there. And then again, people judge you, people speak against you, or they, you know, say all types of evil against you. And I had the people who used to praise me or, man, you're one of the greatest evangelists. And then a year later, they're saying I'm a devil worshiper because I'm talking about whatever. So th- that's kind of hard doing that. And, and actually transitioning so i try to i try to be careful with just announcing stuff like i do speak things into existence mostly in my prayer my prayer time uh, or or praying for someone um but as far as announcing things like people like i tried to go back to the church because it was comfortable when god was calling me out and then i would be booked to do church concerts at churches and um and people would, and if I, we would promote it, people would call the church and say, hey, we're going to send you some info on this guy. This guy is into the Kundalini. This guy eats mushrooms. This guy is that, blah, 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 blah. And they'd just dig up all kind of dirt, even stuff that I had repented of, like in the past. Like I had like going on this teeter-totter back and forth and this pendulum of going back and forth. And it was things that I had, you know, I'm repented. I'm not doing that no more type deal and they would say you look here's what he did in his past this is what we found this is an article this is that this is a song this is a podcast or whatever and so people that started to follow me right so god really had to shut that door for me because i'm i wanted to like he was leading me down this this road but it was just so scary right it it took a leap of faith and you want to go back to what's uh what's comfortable and what's easy right and so he had to run me up out of the church, man. God did it. Used to get mad at people, right? And I still do. Like I have, like I, I don't like I believe in friendship. I believe in uh in being there for people. I don't I try not to gossip about people and backbite and stuff like that. So when people do that to you, you expect people to kind of have that same standard, but that's not always the case. So even though that's there, um you, you get upset, but you know, God orchestrates it all. He uses people. He uses spirits like we're talking about. He uses people, though, you know, for, to, to do that, to make those phone calls. Like, God allowed them people to do that. Like, they wouldn't have been able to do it if God didn't let them. So, anyway, I've just been cut off the video <laughs> end here. I don't know if the uh, audio is back on, but I could bring it up just like that. But anyway, how it works. You can't do nothing that God isn't, gonna, is, isn't going to let you do. And we look at... um the apostle Paul, right? They tried to kill him all kinds of times. Yeah. Snakes jumping out the fire and bit him. You know what I'm saying? He had had been stoned and beaten and he was left for dead. They thought they killed him. They couldn't. They couldn't kill him until the point, his appointed time. Because God's hand was upon him. Even though his, you know, he went through hell. He's still, you couldn't touch him. You can kill his body, you can beat his body up, but you can't kill his soul. And that, and you, when you understand that, you know, you understand that God works out everything for your good. Those phone calls, all of those things like that, that I had to put up with over the years, like that, that was done for my good. They ran me out <laughs> for good, like it was a good reason. And now those same people are, you know, looking at what we've built here. And uh, and the success, and now they're hating even more. So, part of it. Haters going to hate, man. Um, Home Sauce says, become a patron or I'll cut you. He don't play. He's got some music that's pretty, pretty violent. 
But uh, he has. I did hear your new stuff, Home Sauce, bro. It's good stuff too. Your new stuff you're doing. You should keep doing it. Good stuff. Maybe we could do a feature or something. Your your new stuff about ascension and about spirituality. I like that stuff. Take it there, man. Uh, Corey says, God is the alpha and omega, the starter and finisher. Yep. Behold, I'm the Lord thy God. I create good and evil. I create good and evil. He said it. God said it. I didn't. <laughs> Take it up with him. I love y'all, man. I'm going to jump off here now and I'll jump over in the Discord. If y'all want to hang out, jump in Discord. If you're listening to this a month later, if you're listening to this the next day, still jump in Discord. We'll be there kicking it. That's what we do. Love y'all. I got to quit reading these comments. I'm going to keep responding. But we'll jump over in Discord. Have a conversation. Peace, peace. Yo, so much That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.